close. Be right back. Uh, can you hear me? I don't know. No. Okay, um, I'm using the mic on the camera right now. So I got a list of spicy integrals. Um, well, let's see. Um, yeah, let's do some of them. I've got nothing to do right now, maybe for an hour or something. Let's see. Uh, let me see if the Pictures turned around the video, I don't know. Okay, okay, it's it's alright I guess. And notice I'm using them black pen red pen markers. Them black pen red pen. So let's see, what do we have here? Um let us solve. I don't know, that one looks interesting. So, let me see. The integral from minus 1 to 1 of, we've got, um, yeah, x to the 2015 over the 2015 root of 1 minus x. Okay, okay. And then positive. 2015 root of 1 plus x dx. Okay, let me see. Oh, I hope you can see it well. So that's supposed to be a 2015 right here. Um, let me see. So that's a symmetric integral. Maybe I should look if the integral is even or odd. So if we plug in minus x, that would mean we get, well, that's an odd exponent, so that would be minus x. That right here would become, well, wow, okay, yeah, um, that integrand right here is indeed odd, and that means over a symmetric integral. That thing is just zero, <laughs> that was kind of challenging, I guess. Um, let's do the next one. Um, I'm not wearing the hat right now, I'm terribly sorry. Okay, um, ln of cosine of x over cosine of ln x doesn't have any solution, my boy, I checked. Okay, um, what else could we do? <laughs> Let's do a hard one. No. From 0 to pi over 2 of sine squared of x. <laughs> what a joke. I don't know, let's just do something. Um, it's something to differentiate, it's something to integrate. Sine of x, let's use a different pen. Well, what do we get? It's cosine of x. Can you even see it properly? Yeah, you can kind of. The autofocus keeps jumping in. Um, sine of x times ln x. Never tried that. We can try it. Um, well, if we integrate that, that becomes minus cosine. God damn it. Uh, those pens. Okay. Minus cosine of x. Well, that becomes minus sine of x, okay, and that becomes differentiated minus sine of x. So what do we have? That's sine minus cosine, so that's minus um, sine of x, cosine of x from 0 to pi over 2, and that's also 
minus it's positive. No, wait, have I done something wrong? I think I'm kind of stupid. I'm probably stupid. I oh, wrote something. Okay, sorry, I need to look at your comments. No, never mind. Okay. Um, I've done something wrong, I don't know what I did wrong, sine becomes cosine, that becomes minus sine, okay, and sine becomes minus cosine, that, that looks fishy, I don't know why that looks fishy, that shouldn't really happen, um, no, I'm having a sign mistake right here, I don't know why, am I stupid? Could you give me a hand? <laughs> okay, okay, let me see. Let me see. Sine differentiated becomes cosine, and cosine differentiated is minus sine of x. Okay, integrating sine of x becomes minus cosine of x, and that's minus sine of x. So, that feels stupid. Oh, black pen, red pen, hey, hey. <laughs> Well, we can do that. Um, let's leave this out of the way. That's elementary in the case. <laughs> okay, um, let's do e to the minus um, x squared, but we have to plug in some, some uh, upper and lower limits. Okay, um, yeah, from 0 to infinity, that should work. Or let's do minus infinity to infinity. Yeah, that, that should be alright, I guess. Okay, e to the minus x squared dx. So what could we do? Let's call this thing right here i at first, as always. And as you might notice, that's an even integrant. So that would mean if we plug in minus x, it would just be the same expression right here. So we can also write it this way. So that's 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus x squared dx. So that's something we could do. Okay, ne next thing. Um, I don't know what you would like to see. We could do differentiation under the integral sign like I did with the Fresnel integrals. Um, <laughs> yeah, nice spoiler. Sorry, I just have to look at the comments sometimes. Okay, um, let's define a new integral. Let's call it i in terms of, I don't know, t. And we are going to define it as follows. That's the integral from 0 to t of e to the minus x squared dx. But the whole thing squared. And if you might see where I'm going at, we can represent i as follows. So that's 2 times um, the square root of i when t goes to infinity. Yeah. That's all there is to it. We can do that. And now let's play around with this expression right here. So let's differentiate i in terms of t. So di t dt. So what do we end up with? So if we differentiate that, we have to use the product rule at first. So that's 2 times this integral, 0 to t of e to the minus x squared dx. OK, next thing. So we have to take the partial derivative of the integral. So that was the first part and now times. So what do we have? That's the integral from 0 to t of del t e to the minus x squared dx. So this will vanish. That's just 0 as you might notice. And the next thing, we have a constant e to the minus t squared times dt dt. So this is just 1. And the last part will also vanish. So that's quite easy. Um, okay, so what do we end up with at first? That's 2 times the integral from 0 to t of e to the minus t squared um, plus x squared dx. So that's the first thing we could do. No, Feynman didn't invent this technique. He was just using something that life has provi provided him. Um, okay. So what could we do next? We could um, 
Yeah, we could introduce a use substitution, for example. So let's do that at first. Um, please notice that this is i prime of t. Okay. And we can factor out the t squared right here. So this expression is also 2 times the integral from 0 to t of e to the minus t squared um, x over t, whole thing squared plus 1 dx. Okay, and now we can introduce new substitution. So let u equal to x over t, so that's kind of obvious. That would also mean that uh, t times du equals to dx. So I hope you see where this is coming from. Um, we don't want to use polar coordinates. That's, that's way too easy. Um, okay, so what do we end up with now? This is uh, the integral from 0 to t of 2 times t, and then e to the minus t squared, u squared plus 1, du. All right, you see where this comes from? Okay, um, let's move on. Let's get rid of this right here. Um, yeah, indeed. And we now want to integrate this bad boy right here. It's not half as bad as you might think, because we can uh, take a look at this right here. Okay, so I want you guys to notice uh, this right here, don't forget, that's i prime of t. And we also want to integrate this later on to get to uh, back to our i of t. So what we could do, we could observe that we can write this in a different way using partial derivatives. So observe that, okay, 2 times t, e to the minus t squared, u squared plus 1 is nothing else than the partial derivative in terms of t of um, that e to the minus t squared, but with a negative sign, and then u squared plus 1 over u squared plus 1. Okay, so that's quite easy, and we can plug this into our integral. So, what do we end up with? i prime of t is now nothing else than the integral from 0 to t of the partial derivative in terms of t of e to the minus t squared u squared plus 1 over u squared plus 1 du. And the great thing is, oh, I forgot, um, don't forget to change the upper and lower bounds. So after doing the u substitution, we would end up, if we plug in 0, it's just 0 and it goes from 0 to 1. I'm sorry for that. Same thing here. Don't forget that. And now our upper and lower bounds are independent of t, so that means we can take this partial derivative out using the Leibniz rule once again to make it a simple derivative. So that's d dt of the integral from 0 to 1 minus e to the minus t squared u squared plus 1 over u squared plus 1 du. Okay, so that's fucking amazing because we wanted to integrate this back to get our i in terms of t. Payam is here? Um, Dr. Payam, hello. <laughs> okay. So what we can do now, we can integrate i prime of t in terms of t. This would get us back to our i in terms of t. And if we integrate this in terms of t, we, could re uh, we would get rid of this uh, differential right here. So what we end up with is just the integral from 0 to 1 of minus e to the minus t squared u squared plus 1 over u squared plus 1 plus some constant c. So that's what we would end up with. Okay, and that's quite easy because um, remember what our original i in terms of t also was. Our original i in terms of t was nothing else than the integral from 0 to t. t uh, of e to the minus x squared dx, but the whole thing squared. So, which also means if we plug in 0 into here, that would mean that our whole integ uh, integral would go to 0. So, i of t equals to 0 is just integral from 0 to 0. So, that's 0. So, let's conclude that. It's nothing else than 0, but if we plug in 0 into here, well, that's e to the zero of power, and that's just negative of this integral. So that's negative, the integral from zero to one, uh, of du over u squared plus one 
um, and then plus C. So that's something you could observe. I'm sorry if my whiteboard isn't really big. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> okay. When I did this back one year ago or something, it took me ages to figure that out. Okay, so next thing. We found that out and integrating this is quite easy. That's just the inverse tension um, of u from 0 to 1, okay, and then plus c. So if you plug in 0 into here, that's just 0, so that would vanish, and the inverse tangent of uh, 1, that's a negative sign, is just pi over 4. So this is negative pi over 4 uh, plus c. Okay, that's something we can do. And since that is 0, we can add pi over 4 on both sides, and what we would end up with is just the fact that c equals to pi over 4. And then we are nearly done because I want you guys to remember that our original i is nothing else than 2 times the square root of i when t goes to infinity. So we can plug this in. So this is just it. <laughs> 2 times the integral from let's use the one with uh, derived before, so the integral from 0 to 1 of minus e and then minus t u squared plus 1 over u squared plus 1 du and then positive pi over 4. And if we let the limit approach infinity, so that would become 1 over infinity, so that would just go to 0 when t approaches infinity, so we end up with 2 times the square root pi over 4 and this is just 2 times square root of pi over 2, and this is square root of pi. Get wrecked. Yeah, that was quite easy. Oh, sorry, I wasn't able to um, look at the comments. Okay, uh, let me see what else do I have. I have a lot of stuff. Uh, sorry, my camera is on the same board as my laptop right here. Oh goodness. Uh, that's sine of x over x. I've done that a lot of times, but we could do something else. Um, I don't know. Uh, 1 over 1 plus x to the fifth power from 0 to infinity. I could use contour integration for that. That's possible. Um, why do you want to see sine of x over x? I've done that a lot of times. Yeah, just use Feynman stuff. Mm. Hello, Morning Crafter. <laughs> okay. Um. Someone suggested that a while back we could do that. Um, yeah, we've got a hypervolume integral, so that's a trivial integral from zero to infinity or from minus infinity to infinity. It doesn't really matter. We can integrate it over whole r. Um, yeah, let's do from minus infinity to infinity all of those. Um, that's e to the minus x squared plus um, y squared plus z squared dx dy dz that should be right that's the hypervolume integral um, okay so that's that's quite an easy one it's not too hard I encountered this one in quantum mechanics a while back okay so we could change to a spherical coordinates in this case 
So we have to take Jacobian also. So what you should also notice is what do we end up with? Um, that's the first integral from um, 0 to r. And since we are integrating over whole uh, real numbers, that would mean it's from 0 to infinity and the integral from 0 to pi and the integral from 0 to pi over 2, if I'm correct. I'm sorry for the autofocus. <laughs> I don't know why that is. And that's e to the minus r squared. So that's quite trivial. And we also need the um, r squared right here and the sine of theta and also d phi, dr, and d theta. Haven't done that in a while. I can tell you why your comments aren't shown on the video. Um, let me see if I can do anything about the autofocus. I don't know why that is. No, my camera is shaking. I'm terribly sorry. Um, Okay, so no autofocus anymore. Yeah, it's 2 pi to pi. Um, yeah, you are right. I was already a bit suspicious. Thank you very much. 2 pi to pi. Okay, so that should be the right thing. Okay, so we can split this up. We can integrate some stuff before anything else. So the sign from for what purpose should we use sign that becomes the from from zero to pi mm. let me see let me think for a second um, okay. this is now the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus r squared and r squared dr and then times the integral from 0 to 2 pi yeah, the, um, of d phi if I'm right and then the integral from 0 to pi of sine theta d theta okay um, Yeah, the, the radius is going to infinity, so that's okay. I did that. Okay, so that's quite easy to integrate. So those two parts, that's just the negative um, cosine. So that goes from 1 to minus 1. No, that shouldn't be right. Um, let me think. I haven't done that in a while. Yeah, that, that should be the right answer. Okay, let me see what would happen. So that first part is work, please work. From 0 to infinity of e to the minus r squared, r squared dr. Okay, so next part. That would be times the uh, negative cosine of theta in that case. <laughs> sure. Um, okay, negative theta. So it's zero in all cases, and if I just let it go to pi, that would mean that's the cosine of negative one to one. No, that has to go to two pi, in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. And then phi from zero to pi. <laughs> All the great rhyme. Okay, so that's the first integral, and that's um, dr. And the next part is when I plug in 2 pi, uh, 0 is just negative 1, so that's negative, negative becomes positive, and 2 pi 
That's one. What the fuck? I'm I'm stupid to take. Sorry, I had a rough day. I'm terribly sorry. I was away till I don't know one hour ago or something. Had a long day. Yeah, right. Ah, oh, goodness. I'm sorry for that. Yeah. So this is one plus one, so that makes two. And this is just two pi. So we get four pi. From zero to infinity of e to the minus r squared, r squared dr. Okay. So. That was the first thing. <clears throat> okay, so now we have to focus on this part right here. Let's just take a look at this one real quick. Um, like I said before, I've encountered this in quantum mechanics. I came up with a pretty good solution back then. Um, so I want you guys to take a look at e to the minus r squared, but the second derivative. So that's the second derivative, okay. So what do we get? So the first derivative, this is just um, minus 2r, and then e to the minus r squared, okay. And this differentiated is just um, 4r squared, e to the minus r squared, and also the second part, um, negative 2 e to the minus r squared. That should be right. We're differentiating this in terms of r. Yeah, that should be okay. Okay. Um, no, I'm not going to integrate this tension thing. Okay, so that's the first thing. And also, if we integrate this, so we are going to make use of the Leibniz rule. So that was the thing I did back then. I was using it for quite a while already. Okay, so if we differentiate that, um, uh, integrate that, I'm sorry. That's d squared, dr squared, e to the minus r squared, okay, dr. That was just the first part, and also that's the integral of 4r squared e to the minus r squared and then negative 2 e to the minus r squared. Okay, but we can take those derivatives out and we'll see where I'm going. So that's d squared dr squared, and if we integrate this, and we want to integrate it from 0 to infinity, 0 to infinity, so that's the point of it. If we integrate that, we would end up with, um, like we found out before, that's square root of pi over 2, and that would be just 0. So this whole expression right here is equal to 0. So that's one thing. Yeah, I do enjoy math axioms. Okay, so next thing. We want to find out what this is, exactly, so we can bring it to the other side. So that means the integral from 0 to infinity of 4r squared e to the minus r squared dr is nothing else than the integral from 0 to infinity of, um, this is now, yeah, this is 2 times e to the minus r squared dr. And we can divide this expression by 4 right here. Okay, so if we divide it by 4, that's just 1 half times this integral right here. And we know this is just um, square root of pi over 4 in this case. Okay, so that's the solution to this integral right here. That was quite easy. If we plugged it in, that's the uh, 4 times 
pi times the square root of pi over 4, so this gets cancelled out, and this is just, uh, yeah, put it in a different way, that's pi to the, yeah, that should be alright. Uh, that's pi to the to third power. Yeah, that should be okay. Or to the negative to third power. Something like this. Oh no, I never tried that. Um, I hope that's alright. At least that's the way I would uh, do it. Gerolsteiner, oh, German water, in a glass bottle, bottle. Why should I integrate sin job x? Um, that's kind of stupid. Well, if you want to see a sinh of x, we can do sinh of x. The hyperbolic cosine. No, that the hyperbolic sine. Oh, I'm fucking retarded in the last few weeks. My headaches are killing me. It's it's so annoying. Um, but I don't have any headaches right now, so it's kind of okay. I'm still not feeling too well. I don't know. I'm feeling tired all the time. Maybe I've got cancer. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so let's do the integral of sin of x dx that's going to be a hard one oh my goodness that's that's unsolvable guys we we've got something really hard right here i guess we have to use the linearity of the integral for this bad boy Can we integrate that? I guess we can. So this is just e to the x over 2 plus e to the minus x over 2 and this is e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2 and that's the cosh of x plus c plus c plus c. Whoa, that, that was really hard. Thank you, Janus. I love you too. <laughs> Why should I integrate this cosine of 5x? Ah, oh, someone's sending a message in Discord, I guess. Let me get my phone real quick. I'm back in a second. Okay, it, it wasn't this code, it was something else. Okay. Oh, I would love to integrate you. Uh, let's do something fun, I don't know. Um, what could we do? That's looking good. Could we do that? I, I haven't done this thing in ages. I don't know, uh, in normal case, Discord is just um, something I wanted to provide to the people um, who are donating through Patreon, but I wanted to bring some life to the Discord server, yeah, and I created this link. I even let a few more people in, but I don't want it to get too filled up. Okay, um, so what could we do? We could decompose this x to the fourth power plus one. So. Yeah, that should be quite easy. Um, x to the fourth power plus one. What is it? Well, this is just x squared plus one, but the whole thing squared and minus two x squared. 
Okay, so that's something we could do. We could also take the square root of this thing and square the whole thing. That's looking good. Um, yeah. Next thing we can bring this together so that's x squared plus 1 and then um, negative square root of 2 times x and also times x squared plus 1 and positive square root of 2 times x. No, I'm not integrating any more choppy boys. People hate me for this, I don't know. Okay, so we need to do some partial fraction decomposition on this one. This whole chunk is nothing else than a x plus b x squared plus 1 minus square root of 2 times x and then plus uh, let's use c c x plus d over x squared plus 1 plus square root of 2 times x. That's something you could do. everything. Yeah. Okay, so that means that 1 is now equal to ax plus b. And what else do we have? So that's x squared plus 1 plus square root of 2 times x. Okay. And then positive cx plus d. And x squared plus 1 minus square root of 2 times x. Okay. We can multiply everything out. I'm sorry, I can't integrate everything you guys give me as an exercise. I'm sorry for that. ax to the third power and then positive ax and positive square root of 2. a times x squared plus bx squared plus b plus square root of 2 times b times x. That's the first thing. Plus cx to the third power plus cx, negative square root of 2, c times x squared, plus dx squared, plus d, and negative square root of 2, d times x. So is there anything we can conclude? I guess we can. So that means c equals to minus a, and we also know this is x squared. Okay, let's plug this information in. 1 is equal to, okay, so this gets cancelled out, this gets cancelled out, we still got this right here, no, this is cancelling out and this is cancelling out, so that's quite good I guess, yeah, so this does work, so that's 2 times the square root of 2 times um, a x squared, so that's the first thing, plus b x squared plus d x squared, and then um, plus b plus d plus square root of 2 times b times x minus square root of 2 d times x. Okay, okay, we are getting closer, my boys. So it's only dependent of x. So that means um, yeah, uh, b is equal to d in any case. Can we conclude? That means 1 is equal to 2 times square root of 2 a x squared okay, plus 2 b x squared plus 2 b. And this gets cancelled out. I hope I'm still right on this part. The most e to the extreme integral in all of YouTube. Yeah, that was a good one. So b equals to one half, definitely. 
And we also know that this means that this is D. Okay, so we get rid of this, rid of this, and we now know 2 times square root of 2, A, plus 2 times B has to equal to 0. This gets cancelled out, so that means that um, A equals to minus B over square root of 2. Okay. But since b is 1 half, that means it's negative um, 1 over 2 times square root of 2. And that also means that c is equal to 1 over 2 times square root of 2. So, we are done with this, I guess. Yeah, there was the part with the negative, so for ax we are ending up with the negative 1. Okay, so our integral is now just the integral of, so that's um, x squared plus 1 negative square root of 2 times x, so that's the first part. And we also have negative 1 over 2 times square root of 2 times x and positive 1 half. That's the first one. And then positive integral um, 1 over 2 times square root of 2 plus 1 half over x squared plus 1 plus square root of 2 times x dx. So at least we got to decompose this. And integrating and everything else is just a straightforward process. Okay, so we could complete the square on those right here. Yeah, sometimes I'm taking requests and then I'm solving them. Um, okay, so complete the square. x squared plus 1 minus square root of 2 times x. Okay, um, what is that? This is um, x and then minus square root of 2 over 2. Yeah. That should be right. Okay, but the whole thing squared. And then negative this one right here. Um, let me see. Give me a second. Is it just a positive one half? Give me a second, I haven't done this in a while. So this x squared and negative square root of 2. Um, 2 times this. This get cancelled out. Yeah, and times x. And also positive 2 over 4. So this is 1 half. This is one half, so to get to one half, we need a positive one half uh, to, to get to one. So that should be all right. And for this one right here, we end up with x plus square root of 2 over 2 squared and then positive one half. That should be okay. Tell me if it's not okay. Okay, so that means we can rewrite this. Our integral is now um, the integral. Let's split this up. So that's one half times dx over x minus square root of 2 over 2, whole thing squared plus one half. Okay, that's the first part. And negative 1 over 2 times square root of 2 integral of dx, oh no, x times dx, um, x minus square root of 2 over 2, whole thing squared, plus 1 half, and the whole other chunk, so that's positive 1 half integral dx over x plus square root of 2 over 2, plus 1 half, thing squared, and positive 1 over 2 times square root of 2 
x dx over x plus square root of 2 over 2 squared plus 1 half. I hope it's not too boring, I'm sorry. No, black pen, red pen isn't here anymore. He's, he's gone. His phone um, ran on a low battery right now. Okay, so integrating this is not very hard. This is just um, okay, so let me see, u equals to this whole chunk, exactly, x plus square root of 2 over 2, okay, so this is the u squared plus um, 1 over square root of 2, but the whole thing squared, so this is 1 half times the inverse tangent of um, Oh yeah, I can't forget this one. So this is 1 over this one. So let me see. Square root of 2 over 2 exactly. x plus square root of 2 over 2 and over 1 over square root of 2. Exactly. So that should be the expression for the arc tension. Um, same thing here. Nearly the same thing, just with a negative sign. Okay, let me notice real quick. So this is just one half times the inverse tangent square root of two times the inverse tangent of um, square root of two times x. And well, this is one, no, plus two. Yeah, that should be the simplified expression. Uh, yeah, yeah, this should... No, this is a 1, this is a 1. I'm stupid. So, also this right here is just x plus 1 in this case. This is x minus 1. Whew. Hello, Rohit Gay. Okay. Have I said gay? I'm sorry, I will... Oh. G. Rohit G. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm, I'm sorry for this. I didn't want to assume your sexuality. Okay. So, next thing. We could introduce a substitution here. I'm getting tired of this integral, so it's always the same process. This gets split up into two integrals. One is going to be the natural log of something, one is going to be the inverse tangent once again. Um, yeah. So, for example, let v equal to x minus square root of 2 over 2. Okay. That would mean that dv is equal to dx. So let's just take a look at this integral right here. Okay, so this is minus 1 over 2 times square root of 2. Okay, and what we end up with, so x is nothing else than, so this is v plus square root of 2 over 2 over v squared plus 1 half dv exactly. And this is minus 1 over 2 times square root of 2. So that's the first part, so let's split this up. Mm. This right here gets cancelled out. Um, yeah. Um, let's do the first one, so this square root of 2 over 2, and then we have the inverse tension, so this becomes square root of 2 times the inverse tension of um, yeah, 2 times, no, that's 1, yeah, square root of 2 times v, so that's the first part, and the next part is just 1 half times the natural log of this expression right here. So this is um, plus one half, yeah that should be right, plus one half times the natural log of v squared plus one half. So we can plug all of this in, same thing for here, just that your v is changing a slight bit and then you get a solution by plugging everything in. 
Uh, no, it's not pronounced gay in Germany. I mixed up uh, English and German for some reason. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I'm a really special boy. Thank you, but I'm from Saxony, that's something else. I guess I'm going to be live for like five more minutes or something. Um, can we do a, a, a quickie? Let's, let's do a slight quickie. Um, what could we do? Any suggestions? No, I'm not going to integrate one over LNX. I don't know if you can solve this. I can't really tell you. Can we? Yeah, let's do a quick little boy. <laughs> um, I'm still going to post, uh, I already posted four different ways to integrate uh, this one right here, so um, one over e to the x plus one, but I got seven more ways to integrate this one right here, so I'm going to post way more on this one, it's going to be nice. I found 11 ways in, in total to integrate this, it's kind of funny. Um, okay, so at first, let's take a look um, at e to the x. We can decompose this into the hyperbolic cosine. So that's the x over cos of x plus sinh of x. And we can also decompose this one right here. Okay, so one is nothing else than the cos of x minus the sinh of x. Okay, so this is plus cos squared, cos squared of x minus sinh squared of x. Okay, so that's quite nice. What could we do with that? Well, um, I can't really remember exactly how I did it. Let me, let me try this, let me try this. So we have to factor some stuff out. Okay, okay. Yeah, um, this is great. You might notice that this right here is the difference of two squares. I guess that's how I did it, so that's the integral. dx over, so that's the cos of x plus the sinh of x, and then plus, so that's cos. I'm just leaving the x out, uh, minus sinh, and also this is cos plus sinh. Okay, so that's great, and you might notice those are common factors, so we can factor this out. So that's the integral dx over. So this is 1 plus cos minus sinh, and then times uh, this common factor, cos plus sinh. Okay, and yeah, so we would like to get rid of this expression right here. This is annoying us. Um, so we can expand this fraction by cos minus sinh. So let's expand this over cos minus sinh. Okay, so this that should do the trick because you might notice this right here is going to be 1. That's exactly this thing right here. So this is now the integral of cos minus sinh over 1 plus cos minus sinh dx. And now we can introduce a substitution. Okay, so let u equal to 1 plus cos minus sinh. And yeah, that means that the u is nothing else than sinh minus cos dx. And the good thing is we nearly got that. We only have to factor out a minus 1 on this term. So what do we have in the end? So that's minus du 
over u and this is just minus the natural log of u and this is nothing else than minus the, natu the natural log of 1 plus cos of x plus sin of x plus c and that's it. Yeah, that's what I did. Um, I was having a long trip with the uh, terrain. It was like five hours to my uh, hometown and I came up with so many ways to integrate this thing. I don't know, it was really fun. Maybe there are more ways. If you got any more ways, uh, just send me comments. Maybe I already uh, finished it that way. I don't know. Um, yeah, and this expression right here is also e equivalent to the other four expressions we got. Yeah. It's minus sin. Huh? Why? What? Have I missed something? Um, I can solve p versus np. Um, we could take a look into uporn or something, or pressers. Uh, some people re recommended me to use the pressers lemma the, the next time, and well, we could just take a look um, at some pawn site. If pawn of p versus np does exist, we can just check it real quick, and then we know if it's true or not. Easy. No, that should be the right answer. It should be alright. So if you mean here, we have to differentiate that. So cosh becomes cinch and cinch becomes cosh. Porn versus no porn problem. <laughs> Gerald Steiner, German Water. Oh, in the last Water. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. That's okay. Uh, we already integrated this e to the minus x squared before. Why is it wrong? It should be alright. Have I done something wrong? We substituted this expression right here. Uh, right here. 1 plus cosh minus sinh. Should be okay. Um, be, because um, this part right here is just exactly 1. So this is just a... Uh, um, the, the hyperbolic uh, uh, theorem. What's up with the dogs? Give me a second. So I have to stop now. Here's Anton. He's, he's the star. Um, Anton, look at the camera. Oh, that's a close shot. <laughs> um, Thank you guys for watching. Um, yeah. See you in the next video and have a flammable day, I guess. Love you guys. See ya.